We're rolling. Right? <laughs> it's been a while since I've filmed. My name is Diana Chu. Did I already say that? Welcome to Slow Gaze. You have stumbled upon a mini declutter. I was debating between doing a full makeup inventory, just showing you my entire makeup collection, which I will be doing today, but also showing you as I declutter or just decluttering, especially because I just declared July 2021, which is this past month up until July 2022nd to be my full no buy year. I'm not gonna be buying any makeup except uh, replacements and whatnot. I don't expect any replacements to be had. Watch my full video, I've linked it down below. That will tell you all about the no buy year and all of the impetus behind it. But because I've done that and I feel like I'm both operating from a scarcity standpoint, feeling like, oh, if I declutter now, then I really can't have enough makeup to get me through the year, which to me is actually ludicrous. Like my logical brain is telling me that's a ludicrous proposition because honestly, I have so much makeup that this could last me probably a decade um, if everything were to be okay, like on a molecular level and not go rancid or whatever. I would actually have enough makeup for many, 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 many years. So the scarcity equation is really just a moot point. I'm also operating from a, why do I have all this stuff? I've been able to feel good about not bringing any more makeup into my life. So why am I just like harboring all of this stuff? Um, especially when I'm slowing down my consumption so I can actually monitor what I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis, what I feel like really suits me nowadays, what I've been wearing. And honestly, I've been wearing a lot less makeup especially on the day-to-day. -day. And it's not because of COVID. During the entire year of 2020, I found myself putting on almost more makeup, maybe as like an armor, but I've also gotten a little bit older, a little wiser. I've switched jobs. I've linked that video down below. I quit my nine to five corporate job. And now that I've not had that same income, I've really slowed down um, on another pace and I feel so much better and so much clearer. I will be showing you every item. I was going to categorize them, but there's no time for that. <laughs> I just want to show you all my makeup. I will be decluttering as I go a little bit, and I will tally up in the end how much I own to kind of serve as an inventory for this no buy year as well. So it's a multitude of things. I hope you'll join me on Instagram at slowgaze. I hope you will like this video if you enjoyed it or if you've been watching a lot of my declutters. It really helps my little channel grow as will subscribing. So please join me here again. I upload every Wednesday, uh, central time at 11 a.m. Let's go, let's go, let's dive into this. Things that I've been wearing pretty much every day. This is the Westman Atelier 3 Vital Foundation Stick. Please just focus, thank you. Really love this stuff. It has been a game changer. I don't know why, for travel, for whatever, this is it. One out over all of my other foundations and whatnot. So I really, really love this. It's also more economical per gram than the Merit Beauty, um, their foundation slash concealer stick. Another foundation slash skin tint that I've been using and loving is the Chantecai in the shade Vanilla. We have another Westman Atelier, and this is stuff that I've been just wearing most days. This is the Baby Cheeks Blush in Chouchette, my perfect nudie color that's a peachy toned, it's kind of toned down. Uh, it's perfect amount of pink for me. It's muted enough and it shows up on my lips as kind of my my lips but better. I rebought this butter blonde bronzer in deep bronzer from Physicians Formula. We all know and love this. Uh, I just can't get enough of the scent. We have an ambient strobe lighting blush from Hourglass. This is in the shade Brilliant Nude. It's the only thing I have on my cheeks right now. It's a little blown out because of my ring light, uh, but it is a beautiful, very shimmery amber color. This is another blush that I've been re reaching for constantly. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Cheek Swish and Pop Blusher in First Love. Surprisingly, it does show up on my skin tone. This is another like hero product that I own by Westman Atelier. I have mentioned this in other videos before, but this is fast becoming one of my favorite just beauty brands in general. Um, but this is her super loaded tinted highlight in Pot de Peche, and it's that bronzy silvery pink that's really special. It makes my cheeks just 
look really healthy. Lips, we have an Hourglass Lip Stilo in the shade Idealist. Also what I have on my lips right now, You Paint. We have the To Do and then the Tender Coral, I think, yes. I actually like the Tender Coral a lot more than I thought. I thought that this tan shade would be perfect, but it turns out a little muddy on me. I think because it has its rose tone, it actually shows up as like a really muted kind of mud than this one, which has this vibrancy to it. And I'm actually really liking this despite the mixed reviews. So yes, I would purchase it again, but I would only buy this tender coral shade. The Natasha Denona top coat, the crystal top coat in the shade Nude, I think, yes. I actually really like it. It hasn't dried out on me. I think I've decluttered this and rebought it and whatnot, so I'm not perfect. Decluttering really, especially if you have so much makeup, can be overwhelming. And I think the amount of stuff I've repurchased or reintroduced from my declutters have been really marginal compared to how much volume I've been able to say, hey, this is actually not my thing anymore. So not trying to make excuses, I'm just telling you that that's part of the process. Sometimes you will be not quite yourself <laughs> during the process. It's literally a very intense scrutiny, and that's why slowing down and gazing inwards really is something that I'm trying to hold to um, because I will s slip up sometimes and say, actually, no, this does fit into my routines and fit into my lifestyle a lot more than I thought. We're also all always changing, I hope, and this turns out to be one of those one and done shadows that I really enjoy and have been reaching for more than I thought. Face palette by Hourglass, you'll recognize it because it's very famous, I think, at this point. This is the Ambient Lighting Edit in Sculpture. Actually loving all of these except this one super strobey highlight. It's like a little bit too glittery for me. Everything else is perfect. Glossier's Lid Star in Branch. I found that this and the shade Bun, I bought those two together rather recently, but before my No By Year. These really stay on my lids, actually better than any other liquid shadow that I own. So these are really sticking around. I have a whole bag to get through. So I have two Pat McGrath palettes that have survived. This one is the Subliminal Uno, the very first one with that gorgeous Cleopatra blue and these cool shifts. This taupey shade is one of my favorites. Divine Rose 2 Artistry palette. The one with this like dragonfly wing color. You see how it's shifting green, then pinkish purple and magenta, and then it goes a little bit gold right there. So I actually don't use these colors very often. You'll see that these just aren't my jam. I just was so attracted to them and I want them to work. I actually wear this shade here with the Tender Coral from Violet FR and that kind of like tamps everything down. Not that it needs it, but I like to pile on the same colors when I can. This reminds me of the Victoria Beckham Tea Rose shade in my head. I don't own it. It's one of those things that I actually really want, uh, but I was like, this is close enough. Duping the vibes as Hannah Louise Poston always talks about, um, so I don't need to buy it. I already have a shade like that. And it's not very flattering on me. It's like, okay, you know, so I really, really don't need that. I'm a black magic palette in poise, and it just has everything I need, you know? A black shadow, check. This sparkly gold, check. A bronze, check. And anything to warm up if I need it. Um, and then a blue. Blue looks really good on my brown eyes. So that's my like going out color. And ta-da, it's all in one gorgeous, gorgeous little palette. Too Faced Pumpkin Spice, still going strong. <laughs> I keep thinking, wow, I'm never gonna use all these colors, but I should declutter it. And then like something in my heart leaps and says, no, don't do that. Because everything in here is really, like I open this up and my heart skips a beat. It's just stunning and fun and exciting. So if I had a colorful palette, honestly, this is giving me a lot more like fun vibes than the Pat McGrath, but also because I just, I'm not like a eyeshadow artist, you know, I'm not a creator of the eye colors. I just want something that kind of tantalizes my senses in every way. And this tin packaging, the fact that it smells like pumpkin spice, the array of all these chocolate bar like shaped colors, it just, 
it's really exciting and playful. The other one's supposed to be like luxe and moody and glam, and I guess I'm really just torn between those two worlds sometimes. All right, still talking about Pat McGrath. These are probably two blushes that I have fallen in love with the most um, out of like blushes recently. And I think if I had to keep blush around, it would be these two. Like if I had to keep honestly one, I think it would be this shade here, the Nude Venus shade. This one, which I'm trying to open with one hand. That's flirtatious, much cooler toned. Reminds me of Bareback by Nude Sticks in a cream formula. And then this one has like a nice golden sheen to it. So actually wear this as like a no blush blush look. And then this on an everyday, like just perked up a little bit look. Love, love, love these. This blush I should probably just get rid of. This is the Physician's for Formula Butter Blush, Vintage Rose. You'd think that this shows up because of the first love from Charlotte Tilbury showing up on my skin, but actually it really doesn't. It still smells like the Butter Bronzer shade, but that's the color on my middle finger right there. See how like it blends in almost seamlessly? And then on my hand, you can barely detect it. So unless I wanna pile it on, it's going. Melt Genesis, their highlight. Digital Dust, oh, it's so pretty. It's a highlight blusher. I'm gonna call it a highlight because that's what they call it. Then I have two luminizers here. This is the Liquid One by Chanel. It's been sitting in this box. So actually it's about like halfway done. This is in the shade Pearly Glow. I actually really, really love this except that it has fragrance. Um, that's their Le Beige line. And then Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury in 2.5. I've had number three before and I really liked it, but it was almost too perfect for my skin um, in that it, it just matched my skin. I needed something slightly lighter and this is the ticket. So it's also not from their original lineup. I mean, who has 2.5 if they can't help it? Um, I think they had one, two, three, etc. Uh, but they've been adding a lot more shades, which we are happy for. And 2.5 came out and I was like, boom. That's done. So I put this all over the face and this one I just put targeted over high points and whatnot. Okay, two more lip things. I really wanna do a lip video about nude lips for my skin tone and my lip tone. These are going to be part of them. That's why I bring that up. Hourglass, their Hint Velvet Story, and then Bobbi Brown in their Crushed Liquid Lip in Lychee Baby. And they look, this one especially looks a little bit too cool toned. It looks a little bit too light, but surprise, surprise, it's amazing. Um, probably one of the best formulas I've ever tried in any kind of lipstick. I guess I buy things in duos, don't I? These are the only two things I own from Thrive. This is their Brilliant Eye Brightener in Anise on top and then Cali on the bottom. The top, which is Anise, is like a more bronzy golden. It actually shows up as deeper on my skin tone. And then this one on the bottom, Cali, is a much more pewter, silvery tone. Here we have a single eyeshadow, the Dior Mono Shadow in Cosmopolite 657. That's one of those shifty colors that shows up slightly pink, slightly pewter, silver, bronze, gray. It's really, really pretty. I bought this because Michelle Wong talked about it and you know, anything she talks about, I'm like, I'm there, babe. Like, I get it. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I trust you. And I look similar to you in a few ways, you know? And it's just like, thank you for being you. All right. We have a Nude Sticks Bubbly Baby Highlighter. And this is a very golden shade, but it's actually quite translucent. And oh my God, it has all of these lovely little pearls in here that are multi-dimensional. So actually this is a really gorgeous color, even though you'd think, wow, this is a little scary, especially if you, if you have a lighter skin tone than I, it's actually really, really gorgeous and reminds me of the Glossier Soleil paint or solar paint that they just came out with. I wouldn't use it as a bronzer. It just has that vibe. Quick interruption. I had to go do some groceries, come back, and now we're back. So feels like a long time for me, might not be that long for you. Squeaky chair, where were we? Haha, -ha. so this is the other foundation-y thing that I've been really, really loving. This is the Le Beige uh, Water Fresh Tint by Chanel. It is medium light. I am kind of rationing it. I just like it so much. It comes with this tiny little brush that actually works perfectly with this. I think because it's synthetic and it just, 
perfectly blends everything out and I like the pair. It just seems like a really luxe thing, but it actually really works. Um, don't know how else to talk about it right now, but this is the other thing I've been using in my like rotation of three foundation tint concealer doodads. This is my backup if I had to have a backup. This is by Merit Beauty. This came in their like essentials minimalist kit. I chose the color Ecru or Ecru and it's a little bit pale for me, but I think it's pretty comfortable to the Westman Atelier. It's a little thinner, um, doesn't mean the coverage is less, but if I had to buy one of them again, I would buy the Westman Atelier because like I said, it's just more substantial for your money. The value is greater. This is a highlighter by RMS Beauty. It is actually in a pot and it's their master radiance, like creamy thing that you can put all over your face. <laughs> Sorry, I've just haven't been filming for a little while now. I've forgotten all my words, my descriptors for makeup. This is their master radiance base in rich in radiance. Um, they have, I think, one more shade of this, and it's probably one of my favorite liquid highlighters. It also goes on nice and creamy, and it's very natural, let alone it's clean beauty. I really like RMS, so if I had to get another luminizer, it would be this one over the Charlotte Tilbury. Here we go with another highlighter. This is the Natasha Denona Super Glow, and it is in the light medium shade, excuse me, so number two. And this is why you always cover your mirror if you have a ring light. Yeah, I think it's really natural. It is slightly sparkly on the skin, but only from close up. I love the huge mirror that it has. I've kind of rekindled a love for Natasha Denona face products specifically. One that's not really a highlighter, it's a famous powder, dim light, incandescent light, and radiant light on the right here. Uh, I actually like all of them. I do use this in combo with this under my eyes, and then this kind of as an all over, almost like the Kosas light bronzer. Tom Ford, shade and illuminate. This is the intensity one shade. I really hate that when I go in with a brush, it leaves any like dust particles and residue just embedded in the cream. And it's very hard to get rid of unless you literally scrape product out, which I am not want to do. And these, two really work pretty well. I know a lot of people don't like using the lighter shade, but I actually really do. I think it's a nice, it's a little milky, um, but it has that wet look, that glass, like original glass skin look. And I really appreciate that. Chanel's Kinder and Experience. I still, I thought I decluttered this, honestly, but I might've brought it back just to swatch this one shade that I really love. Same with this one. This is Dior's Backstage Eye Palette in Warm Neutrals, number one. Let me open it for you. It comes with this creamy kind of concealer. It's really feather light. This is not what you expect. It's not really just like a concealer. It's supposed to just help any of these powders that are really silky set down. And I'm using this shade the most. This is actually a surprise hit and I really kind of enjoy the shades in here. This was from my drugstore <laughs> little rant about how bougie I have become and just I don't buy drugstore makeup really as much anymore. This is the e.l.f. palette. It's just in the shade light. Uh, I haven't been reaching for this as much mostly because I have the two Pat McGrath blushes way more and I I don't know this is great but I just don't need it. This blush I still am trying to like dupe but what's the point of duping if I already have the favorite thing that I love? Uh, why do I need more of it or things that are, you know, cheaper? If it is it, it is it. I really shouldn't be trying to find a dupe for it, so I've stopped looking. This is the Mocha Havana shade by Lancome, and I really, really love it. I actually use this brush here. Jones Road Miracle Bomb, the shade Dusty Rose, and you can see I've actually gotten quite a bit of use out of it. Um, it smells really strongly of this like fragrant kind of citrusy ginger scent, like very energizing. Love it. I really am trying to use this instead of an overall highlight or an overall like foundation. Honestly, I've been really trying to wean myself off of concealer and this is supposed to like blur, give you that glass skin. It's actually pretty multi-purpose, especially if I'm not wearing makeup on certain days, which is kind of unheard of, but I've been doing that more and I would use a little bit to sweep in my brows, bring like a freshness and dewiness to my face again. What would you say that was? 
highlighters. Meteorite by Guerlain, and this is their original one, I think. And I think it's in the medium shade, yeah, number three. And it smells like violet candies. If you don't know what that smells like, it just smells like candy. <laughs> but not the usual, like, vanilla or caramel. Um, I bought this after seeing Michelle Long talk about this. She was buffing this into her face. One side of her face was just growing more and more smooth and polished and filtered. And I was like, that is proof that this must work. And honestly, the fragrance is so strong that I reach for the uh, hourglass more. Also, it's, it's really an experience. If you have time to put this on, it's a great time. But if you don't, uh, I definitely reach for this instead because it does a very similar thing. I don't think it polishes quite as much, but this doesn't leave as much glitter. It also has a mirror. You don't have to like take the little sponge off. You don't have to be careful with the pearls. So it really is dependent on your lifestyle. I am not a mom. I don't have any like pressing things in my house that are going to take me out of a ritual, like a morning makeup ritual. So I do have time for this sometimes, but even so, if I'm just dashing out and I want a little veil of powder, I really reach for this more. Rosy Babe, Bomb de Rose by Terry. Bye bye Terry. I like it. It smells like roses, but I probably wouldn't buy it again. Super expensive, also smells like roses, but it tastes like roses. I'm over that. I would much prefer this, the Lip Whip in Rosy Gold by Cary Gran. You can find it on credobeauty.com and I've almost hit the bottom of that because it just like goes on kind of like a whipped smoothie kind of thing. Um, sorry, I keep saying thing. Like a whipped smoothie texture. It really is emollient. It gets your lips super plump really quickly and it doesn't melt down like a gloss that much. The little flecks of gold in there are mostly to just help bring a little bit more light to your lips without it being like a full-on gloss. So I appreciate it. You can't tell that there's glitter on your lips. You can't feel it. Um, it's a really sophisticated thing and it smells like peppermint. This is my other lip balm of choice. You can tell that I really enjoy a balm in a pot. This is a plastic pot coconut or the flavor coconut by Fresh. And you can see I'm almost done with it. So once I'm done with it, want to try the lemon flavor the peach flavor, but honestly, those are just for the scent experience. These, this really doesn't plump my lips or it doesn't nourish them in the same way that the Cary Grand one does. And this one is certified clean by Credo Beauty Standard, so I would forever buy this one. They have ones that are totally clear and colorless, plus ones that are far more pigmented. They look similar, don't they? <laughs> this is the Charlotte Tilbury one in P Penelope Pink. I think it is in their kissing formula. And then we have my favorite red by La Rouge. Yeah, La Rouge 03 Camille. I wore this in my, oh my God, I quit my job video and a few people have asked about it. It is the perfect satin, kind of demi matte shade of a deep bloody rose, but also the finish is really blotted. You can layer it on, it's so comfortable. And this compact is just, chic beyond measure. Let's round out my eyeshadow, liquid eyeshadow collection. Um, I think I revived this Kosas also from a declutter. Again, this is just one of those realities. I heard Jessica Braun talk about this. I saw Jamie Page also bring this into her life and they were both like obsessed with it. And I was like, gosh, I should really just try it again to see what's going on. And actually, because I've gotten enough color during the summer this year with being outdoors and like safely going down a river or hiking a little bit. I've gotten a good amount of color in my face. So actually these bronzes and golds start to make a lot more sense on me than they did when I was in the deathly pale of winter in Wisconsin. So these are back. This is Globe by Kosas and then Sheen by Ilya. I don't know which one I prefer for more, but they certainly do their job well enough and they're also differentiated enough that I'm glad I have both. On top of that is this Glossier Lit Star in Bun. As I had mentioned before, it really is one of those like goldy shades. But it has a little bit of um, like a neutral tone to it. Yes, it looks pretty yellow, but it has enough like silver 
so it can be warm or cool and it really works with my skin tone which I think is more neutral if you think of it as an olive undertone. Blush the Crushed Lip Color by Bobbi Brown. <laughs> wow for alliteration. This is now the YSL in I hate when they don't tell you. It's number 79 but I remember it as Coral Plume. It's a richer kind of cinnabar color. It has terracotta leanings. It's hard to describe because it's it's just a pinky orange, I think, but it has a deeper richness to it than the outside of the bullet. Here's one more lippy. This is the Westman Atelier Lip Suede Palette in Le Nude. This is the point where I realize I have way too much makeup yet again for like the fifth time in my brain. So I thought I would express it vocally. <laughs> I have way too much makeup. Here's another box of it. So let's go through this really quickly. Um, this is also a box where I feel like I won't be keeping some of this. So I might be decluttering more in this little segment here. We have a Revolution Highlight Reloaded in Dare to Divulge. I bought this more recently. It's a really great drugstore highlight, but why do I need to prove that I, you know, own drugstore compared to high-end <laughs> if I already own the high-end one? So I'm going to declutter this and give it a new home. I'm also going to declutter this Suji shade by Carrie Grand. So this is in the same lip whip, but it's a really strong color. They have a lot more pigment in here, but it's not something I will use, so that is going. These things that I'm decluttering as I go will not go into the count of makeup. I'm also decluttering this, the Cinnamon Shade Blush Balm by Flower Beauty. It has served me relatively well, but I'm learning that I don't want a serum -y blush um, out of a tube. If anything, I would get more of the like Jones Road kind of tints that are goopy and shiny on your cheeks versus something that comes out of a tube or, you know, those M Cosmetics little serum drop blushes. I forget what they're called, but it's too messy for me. I also don't use a beauty blender or anything, so using my fingers, it gets more on my fingers than stays on my face. Okay, I might keep this one around for now. This is the Wet n Wild Precious Petals Highlighting Powder. It has a much pinker sheen, even though it's still pretty foiled and silver. Westman Atelier in Pop It. I really don't use this as much, so I should consider consider getting rid of this. I'm gonna put that in the maybe pile. Ah uh, yes, I bought this and then I don't use it. It's by Maybelline. It's their Great Lash Blue color. Same with this Marc Jacobs um, out of the blue eyeliner pencil for when I wear blue makeup. So maybe these two go in the maybe pile as well. Boy Brow by Glossier. I've had this for years now. I can just declutter this. Merit's Bounce shade of highlighter. This is actually a really nice, if you're looking at this area of my skin, it just looks like a nice veil of slip. It's kind of like the Glossier Halo Scope, I would say, but I, I prefer this formula. More than the Violet or Violet FR Bomb Shine. Gorgeous little monogram on the top, but the packaging and the way that it swivels up is a little bit cheap. I would say it like rattles around in there and the way this is, it, it does melt down on contact. I would say it's a little bit milkier, juicier when it melts down, like a little bit greasier almost than like the Merit one. But I cannot deny that it gives you a pretty nice glass shine. So I'm still gonna keep it. Here are four <laughs> iPods from Westman Atelier. We have Chocolat, which I will keep. Champagne, which I will not keep. Keeping, noir, not keeping, tabac. I've been trying to use this over and over, and honestly, it's still too peachy for me. We have another palette by Victoria Beckham Beauty. This is their Tweed Quad by Vapor Beauty. It's a strange combo of colors for me. In the Nude by Nude Sticks. This is a great shade, a little bit peachy toned, great for the summertime. Airback, which I really prefer over any of the other shades. Like I said, it's like muted tone, but it shows up on my skin. I am not keeping Bondi Bay, which everybody raves about. <laughs> I just don't use cream bronzers as much. Golden Goddess by Charlotte Tilbury. Patrick Ta's She's So LA. Film Star Bronze and Glow by Charlotte Tilbury. 
I'm gonna count that as a face palette. Aha, another highlighter from the drugstore. That was the Master Chrome um, in shade 100 by Maybelline. Yes, definitely decluttering this. Rose Milk by M Cosmetics. Decluttering this, Merit Beauty's Au Naturel Tinted Lip Oil. Blush light highlighter thing <laughs> in Luminoso Baked Powder Blush is nice, but I already have the one by um, Melt that I think is very similar. They're Digital Dust Genesis shades, so this is also being decluttered. I'm decluttering both Sunset Strip on the right and Sunkissed on the left. Can you tell how similar they are from both from Nude Sticks? Venetian Rose by M Cosmetics. I'm decluttering the Balming gloss by Ilia in Saint Benefit Benetint, original shade, really lovely. For anyone considering doing this at home, <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. This takes a little bit of patience, a lot of bit of room, and some focus, but also it feels like I'm going through a roller coaster of emotions right now. I'm like, wow, I have so many pretty things. I appreciate you. I love this. I have all these memories coming back to me, and then I'm also inundated with this feeling of, oh my gosh, I have too much. The excess feeling is suffocating, a little depressing. You're gonna be hit from both sides. So just wanted to throw that out there. I am also getting a distinct feeling that after I go through this and just tell you my like ultimate tally, I am going to want to see these piled up in their categories. So I'll show you all of my makeup in categories, hopefully at the end of this, of this video and from there maybe do like one more step of declutter from there. So we'll see how I fare but since I'm at a good stopping point I wanted to bring that up. Let's quickly go through brushes because it's not very exciting to end on brushes but I do have quite a few of them. Sephora's eye brush I think it's in the shade the shade the size 27 love it for the crease and my eyes this is one that I bought relatively recently. It's by Lottie London LF015. It's kind of a good one and done brush. I kind of put my contour or my bronzer down like this, and then I start to blend and swap it like 90 degrees, and it kind of diffuses it that way. It's great with both creams and powders, so I'm actually really liking that. I do not enjoy this Mario uh, Makeup by Mario F3 brush. I thought it would be perfect for highlight and you know, bronzer. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it's well made, but it's just not one I'm reaching for. So this is going to be decluttered. Sephora's 50 domed blush brush. Honestly, I haven't reached for this in a while, so that can go as well because I have this one, which is great. This Morphe M527 brush for blush. I also have this, the Straight and Wavy 122 by Makeup Forever. I, cut, I have a couple of other brushes hiding in a pile, so I can't get to them right now. Uh, but Merit's like only brush that they have is a godsend. I really think this is the best brush I've had in a long time. You can use it for buffing out concealers. You can use it for foundation, but I use it for blush and it's actually picking up blush really, really well. Even with that Pat McGrath, like super pigmented stuff. It's perfect for stamping on. I'm gonna get rid of this Morphe times Jaclyn Hill in favor of the Westman Atelier blender brush. I also have her baby blender, her eyeshadow brush, and her flat eyeshadow brush. I don't wanna declutter those yet, but honestly, those three are not my favorite. I have a crease brush from Bare Minerals from many, many years ago, and then a Marc Jacobs smudger brush. I have a dual-ended hourglass brush, and I have this airbrush from Charlotte Tilbury. Moving right along, we have this Rosy Rendezvous by Revlon. I guess I was just on a like makeup kick. I just wanted to buy makeup, and I wanted to buy it from the drugstore. So I don't need this. I'm going to declutter that, especially since I have these other ones from Pat McGrath that are my favorite right now. This is the Danessa Myrick's Balm Contour in light number one. I'm going to declutter this. The Tom Ford Eye Color Quad in De La Creme. Brushes Intact. Super Blue by Charlotte Tilbury. The Rowan 75 Degree Quad. Westman Atelier's Lip Suede in her original four shades, Le Rouge. 
Urban Decay. I guess this is one of the first mascaras I am now bringing up to you. Chestnut by Melt Cosmetics, their lip color. I wore this in my like fall lipsticks video that you can find on my channel. Going to declutter it though. Fig by Nude Sticks. This is the like a warm kind of taupey shade. Then we have Ginger if I'm not mistaken. Yes, by Melt Cosmetics as well. This is a warmer orangey burnt tone. I really love Melt Cosmetics and their lip products don't get enough love especially the liquid lipsticks. I know that they're not that popular these days. We're kind of in a lip tint, lip balm realm. I don't know what kind of tribe or movement we're in right now for lips, but it certainly isn't all about the lip, liquid lip anymore. Um, but these are a nice, delicious vanilla flavor. They don't dry out that much and like on your lips and they're just a thin veil, almost weightless, transfer proof, beautiful colors. I'm really smitten. Buy this formula. A high pigment long wear eyeliner. This one was from NARS. It is the shade Mambo. I think it was because Hindash has spoken so highly about it. This can go in the maybe pile because I just don't have that many eyeliners I wear anymore. This one is by Marc Jacobs in the shade Rococo. So I think I'll keep this one and not the NARS Mambo shade. Two YSL Volupt shines. You can see that they're slightly different because one is much older and has like all these pitted pock marks on this side. And this is the newer bullet. So I have told the story before, but the name and shade has completely rubbed off. And I'm now very confident that the shade is discontinued. I just cannot find it anymore. Even though I've tried really hard to find a similar dupe, this is not it. And I thought I was closest with this, and so it's just a bygone thing. This is the shade 44, the new shade. It's a little bit too milky cool toned for me. I thought it would be just perfect, but let me show you the original that I've been trying so hard to get. This is as far as it goes in the bullet. This obviously I have a lot more of, but you see how pink this is, almost like purple leaning compared to this shade. If I had to choose a single eyeshadow <laughs> to wear all the time, it would be this Sandstone by MAC. Dior Addict Stellar Shines, and I think they're the same color, yes, because I thought I had lost one and lo and behold, I bought another, but it's another creamy like pink that has a little bit of shine to it or a lot of shine to it and a little bit of shimmer. Westman Atelier's Lit Up Stick in Lit. I would not buy this again. It gives me unicorn skin. I do have a Westman Atelier uh, squeaky clean liquid lip balm in the shade Shushet? No, this is the shade Shushu. It's too milky. Too milky and too cool toned. I have to be very careful when I buy those shades. Compared to this oat shade by Tower 28, it's better, but I don't, I don't use this. So it's going. I got this as a sample and I don't use it. It's going. This is the Givenchy, just like a regular lip balm. I'm also decluttering this by Vapor. It is their Lip Nectar in Desire. It smells like honey. This is Fenty's Gloss Balm Cream in Fenty Glow. I have two Janessa Myricks pieces that are actually really lovely makeup. Um, we have Bread and Butter and then we have Tiara. One is used, at least the way I use it, as a blush. You don't need a lot. And then this is used as another like liquid luminizer. I think it does a great job, but I hate the scent. I really hate the scent. Sorry, I was just showing you the uh, <laughs> the edges of it, not really the doe foot. I think these are going to someone else. Mm, I haven't reached for this in a while, but I think it's still a lovely lipstick. This is the Velvet Fawn shade by Lisa Eldridge. Single eyeshadows by Chantecaille. This is Elephant and you guessed it, Rhino. <laughs> this is really lovely formulation. If you haven't tried these, it's hard to recommend something so expensive, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I love them so much. Rhino shade. This is described as a sophisticated olive, but it has glitters of all different shades. This is a pewter with a few less, like more monochromatic glimmers. So honestly, they are very similar, um, as you can tell, and I prefer and I reach for Elephant more, even though Rhino is just as beautiful. So this is Elephant, and like I said, it has that brown hint to it of pewter. This one has like a deeper shade and more glitter. So if you want something a little bit more intense, a little bit more party, I think the Rhino 
is the way to go. I'm gonna keep both of them. I'm going to declutter Terracotta by Merit. Brow combo of late is this Merit Brow Pomade um, in the shade Black Brown. This is PYT Beauty's brow pencil. Okay, another mascara, Double Wear Zero Smudge by Estee Lauder. Charlotte Tilbury's Browless Lift in Black Brown. And whilst I'm doing this with you, please let me know if there are any reviews or swatches or videos that you'd like to see now that you know what I have in my collection. I'm happy to do those types of videos. It just seems like there are so many out there already that is hard to really pin down a niche and decide, yes, I'm gonna do swatch video of these and it's gonna be useful to X number of people. So anyway, keep that in the back of your mind as I'm going through this. This is the Color Chameleon Golden Quartz for Hazel Eyes by Charlotte Tilbury. I have a lot of single shadows, if you have not noticed. This is the Dallas by Benefit Mini. Yes, I do use the brush. Surprise, surprise. Marie Antoinette in Charlotte Tilbury's Eyes to Mesmerize. Shantikai's Mermaid Eye Color in Triton. Tom Ford's Spice, and then we have an errant Westman Atelier in Vaughn Rouge. You can tell I haven't even used it because it's one of those shades that I just don't know how to use. I'm keeping it because I'm determined to figure it out. But this is Spice from Tom Ford. Two more single eyeshadows. We have Mink and Midnight, both from Victoria Beckham Beauty. Mink is by far my favorite and I do use it uh, quite often. It has this gorgeous like oil slick, dark, dreamy, punky looking color. And then it has like an array of silver flecks on top. So it wears in beautifully, it's rock and roll, and it has just this gorgeous duality to it. Midnight is nice, but it's not like my absolute favorite, but you can tell that I really am into blues. We have Kapari's Coconut Lip Glossy. Ah, Lip to Cheek in Spell by RMS Beauty. I'm gonna keep this. Two lip products, Glaze by Fenty Beauty, really love this. I like that the scent is slightly different. It's like a marshmallow -y vanilla scent. Uh, and then Fawn, which is kind of the lipstick I've been reaching for the most recently. It's by Lawless. Obsidian by Tom Ford. I am getting rid of this. Biscuit, aha. This is the Face Trace Contour Stick by Westman Atelier. I prefer this over the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. These two are also from Westman Atelier. We have a Peau de Soleil and a Peau, no, a Coupe de Soleil. Coupe de Soleil is her butter bronzer, per se. It's a powder. We're doing great, folks, <laughs> if you're still with me. We have Dior's 100 Nude Look, Matte Nude Look Shade. <laughs> These are refillable. Shade and Light by Kat Von D. When Kat Von D was still there, this is a beautiful highlighting end and a beautiful blush contour end. It Cosmetics Brushes Airbrush Dual Ended Eye Transformer number 135. It's all right, I'm gonna get rid of it. This is one I've seen a lot of people using and finally bit the bullet and bought. So, so worth it. This is one of the best brushes. Morphe and Jaclyn Hill, it's the JH06. She calls it her everything brush. It's a really thin kind of brush that you just kind of dab on. Violet FR's Petal Bouche Liquid Lipstick. Vanessa Myrick's Iconic shade. Um, I forget what these are called, the Color Fix Cream Colors, but it's the Metallic Iconic shade. I really like this, so this is staying. These are both from Nude Sticks. This is chocolate on the bottom and then cocoa on the top. I'm going to keep the darker one. Kit, the first lip liner that I have introduced to this video. This is by Emma Beauty. It's quite nice, actually. It's one of my favorites, and I reach for it quite a bit. One upping that is actually the Lip Cheat by Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Iconic Nude. It's actually just one step closer to my lips. It doesn't tint them too peach or too pink. Um, this is my true like lip color, but a little bit stronger. So if I had to keep one, I would keep the Charlotte Tilbury one. But then we have the Kylie Jenner Victoria Lip Pencil, which I've used a fair amount. Ebony by Milk Cosmetics. I was trying to find a dupe for a Jeffree Star color in, I think it's called Dominatrix a similar liquid lipstick, and unfortunately this isn't it. It looks like a dark chocolate on the wand. 
which is what I was hoping for, but it also, it just turns out black on me. It's like just that much too good at what it does. Um, so sadly, I think I have to let it go because it just isn't the right shade for me. It's gorgeous. I still love the formula, but I just don't reach for it. We have a couple more eyeliners. So the Revlon Colorstay Black Pures Down to Earth in Brown. Tattoo Liner in Mad Max Brown by Kat Von D, which is my all-time favorite. One more eye thing. This is the color... Chameleon Amber Haze by Charlotte Tilbury. Two Ilia <laughs> Limitless Lash Mascara Tinies. And then I have an Honest Beauty Mascara. I have the Merit Beauty Mascara. And then I think, yeah, the Hourglass Unlocked Mascara. And then one Brow Pomade from Milk in Cypher. I actually really don't like this, but I don't have another one except the Merit one. And I always want to have a backup, so Honestly, I should just get rid of this, keep this. I did bring a few out from other declutters that I was like, uh, oh, do I still want them? Um, and I'll tell you why I brought those out. I'm hoping you'll see that, honestly, the deliberation and the talking about the makeup is more important than the binary yes or no um, dichotomy that I'm kind of in the world of. Because declutters are really satisfying because they're also about like mini reviews, but they're also about getting rid of stuff and purging and feeling really satisfied through someone else. So I want you to know that I think about all my declutters and these types of videos really holistically, uh, not only the value to you, but the value to myself because I am actually going through with this and not just performing it on camera for a thrill or some entertainment. Um, I really am thinking deeply about what I'm doing. So I'm trying to be transparent with you. These are the products that I have kind of brought back from the dead and cosmetics. <laughs> we have Faded Clementine and Magic Hour in the Heaven's Glow shades. I know she came out with a recent Venetian rose and it looks gorgeous. At first I thought I would keep this around the pink Heaven's Glow, sorry, pink Magic Hour shade, but the pearl highlight that comes off of the cheek is a really cool toned, almost magenta pink, and I don't want that. I want something a little bit more warm toned, like a gold, which is what is delivered by this, this faded Clementine shade. I've been using them both in tandem in previous lives, <laughs> my previous makeup lives, but honestly, this is more special to me than the pink one. So I'm gonna keep faded Clementine and not keep Magic Hour. I also brought these back from the dead because I rekindled a love for RMS Beauty. I found myself lusting after some of their stuff and I thought, well, instead of just buying more stuff, I should just re-look at what I had had and it's still on the house. And this is both one of their highlights and one of their bronzers. I feel like I go through bronzer kicks, I go through blush kicks, <laughs> And I go through highlighter kicks where I'm just like obsessed with finding out the newest highlighter or figuring out if there's another one that I can add to my collection because I haven't tried it or is it going to give me like a different undertone? It's all a cyclical process. So these are the two. We have Grand Dame here in the highlight shade and then we have the Madeira bronzer. They're both called luminizing powders. If any of you are thinking of dabbling in RMS or dabbling in um, clean beauty and are, is looking for a highlight, I think this is better than the Ilia ones. I think it's just so melty and so good. It's not shimmery and it goes on like a dream. This is also a really special tone because you see how deep it is. And yet the way I wear it is like on my eyes and also a little bit as contour bronzer. So these are two very special shades. The reason why I decluttered them previously was just because they had such a sheer volume of other stuff and they didn't make the cut. But to scratch the itch, I'm going to pretend like I bought them again and I didn't have to and I'm bringing them back into my life. So I have a highlighter and a bronzer coming back in hot. And these three were also up for consideration because I have some palettes. Bear with me on this. Okay. It's a little bit messy because we're talking like individual pans right now. So I just popped this out to see what color this was. So these are their Salt New York's Radiant Cream Tin Pros and this is in the shade Beige. It is a lovely, lovely dupe slash like comparative product 
to the RMS Master in Radiance Balm, but it comes in this convenient tin if you're into magnetic makeup. This is the Light Medium Sculpt and Bronze Cream Tint Pro, a lip and cheek cream tint pro in the peach shade. It's actually quite uh, fluorescent rose. I do not enjoy that as much. The larger size palette, I have two of these and you'll see why in a second. Um, this is mixed in with other makeup. So we have Blossom. It's a little uh, sampler from Kair Weiss. Kair Weiss. Blossom is nice, but I don't like it as much. And then I bought this, which is way too like white. It's way too white. Why did I buy it? I don't know. I'm getting rid of both of these. I'm also getting rid of these two Alima Cosmetics. This is in the shade Hope, and this is in their highlight called Alchemy. It comes up almost like paste, like glue. It is a really weird texture. It's not thin. It doesn't even say. I forget if this is ethereal or something with an E, but it's by Kierweiss. So sad to get rid of these, but I really don't reach for them. The three down the middle here are from the Rust palette from Melt Cosmetics. I think I have to declutter. This is where it just becomes like in stark relief how did I think that I was this person, <laughs> even though she was just with me like a year ago? It's really bizarre. And so this process of decluttering has been eye-opening and momentous to say the least. So we have Spice by Salt New York. I also don't reach for this much, so that's going. I have the Medium Sculpt in Bronze. Don't use that very much. That's also going. I'm going to keep bronze because surprisingly it looks a lot like the Westman Atelier um, Peau de Soleil. They're similar. This one is gold and this one is bronze. This has a deeper tone to it. This is their contour shade. It is different from the light medium sculpt and bronze. That means that my Salt New York mini palette can be completely filled up again by bronze. We have the light medium and then we have beige and peach, and that gives me a full face of highlight blush, a little bit of bronzer, and a little bit of eyeshadow. So I really am enjoying having a smaller palette. Two of these, as I mentioned, this one is already populated by Natasha Denona primarily. I did a full video on depotting these, so if you're interested, I've also linked that down below. I'm gonna show you this by Tarte. This is also filled with some Creona Cosmetics shades. We have some random samples. This one's from Aether Beauty. We have a lot of these longer fingernail-like chiclets. Those are by Melt Cosmetics from a few different palettes. I think mostly from the 27 palette. Welcome to the floor. <laughs> this is exciting because I haven't done this before where I see all of my eyeshadows, just the palettes open like this before aerial view. Just seeing all the shades that I have that are kind of repeated. Uh, you can see like little globes of blue that are repeated. So I think this is the way to go for me to declutter from here. First note is that this is a much more consolidated. So actually I was able to fit everything in here after decluttering most of the colorful purples, reds, yellows that I had in here. I'm trying to just keep one palette full of eyeshadows that are singles. So you can see I only kept a few Cleuna eyeshadows up here, just a few from Melt Cosmetics, very neutral, uh, and then a few from Lorac, which are these smaller ones, and then the Natasha Denona ones are these size. So I'm really happy with this. This is the base of my like bronzes and taupey like browns. Then I'm moving into this Pat McGrath Labs one, the subliminal palette, which I am gonna keep. But that means, yes, you guessed it, I am not gonna keep the Uma Beauty one because I have all of these shades and I have a much better blue in that. So I also have a black. So you see, this is really helpful. Even though it's my favorite palette, I just have other things that I think I would rather keep. It's my favorite palette as a single palette. Same with this Super Blue by Charlotte Tilbury. I don't think I need this. So that's gonna go as well. Then if we look at these other ones that are open, I have a lot of shades that I use right now in this Dior compact, so I'm not gonna keep this. Della Creme by Tom Ford. This is a really special formulation, so I'm still gonna keep it. 
But looking at some of these here, I know I won't be keeping the Vapor Beauty quad. I think it's called Labyrinth. I might get rid of this. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I've been really holding on to this because of some of the beautiful shimmers and honestly because of like this shade here. But I'm looking that I have something very comparable there. And it's not like I don't have beautiful shimmers in this palette. So I might get rid of the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2. This is also on the chopping block just to, just because I don't really reach for it, but I'm not ready to get rid of it yet just because of the packaging. I know, I know. This is my bronzer slash contour collection. Again, the Westman Atelier Biscuit, Butter Bronzer, Deep Bronzer, Madeira Bronzer, and then the Coup de Soleil from Westman Atelier. I feel good about having four bronzers, so that's gonna be the final number. Right now I'm down to seven eyeshadow palettes. I wanna take you over to blushes here. So quite a few blushes. I can already tell that I am not gonna keep one of these. The Sun Kissed and Actually in the Nude, both from Nude Sticks, those can go. So what's left from Nude Sticks is Bareback. I feel good about having that as a cream blush. I feel good about having Chouchette by Westman Atelier as the cream as a cream blush actually my primary cream blush then the other two that i really like using is spell by rms but i should really get rid of pop it i simply do not reach for this anymore the patrick tosh is so la so i think i'm gonna get rid of that i know that this one by elf was kind of a question mark so i should just get rid of it because everything else i know i use luminizers and highlighters i might get rid of the rms beauty one the grand dame as well as these Master Chromes, and get rid of the Lit by Westman Atelier eye stuff, <laughs> and a couple lip things. Get rid of this black Revlon, and that's about it. Face palettes over here, we have the Hourglass one, which is like the Sculpture Edit. We have the Hourglass one, which is the three powders. This by Charlotte Tilbury, I just don't reach for anymore. Single eyeshadows at the top, and then lip products at the bottom. You can see they're overflowing. I honestly shouldn't keep the number 44 by Yves Saint Laurent. Like I said, it's quite cool toned and pink for me. I probably won't keep one of these mirages um, because I have a duplicate and I don't want to keep duplicates. I probably will get rid of this Fenty lip cream. I say probably and I just mean I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of this Lisa Eldridge Fawn. I feel pretty good about the rest except uh, Yves Saint Laurent's Coral Plume. So I'm gonna get rid of Midnight. This has been on the chopping block for a little bit, a little bit, a little while now. Honestly, I should probably get rid of Fig. And these two, I really want to like them, but I don't. I feel pretty good about this. Let me count everything up and then wrap it up. If I look a little different, it's because I was putting makeup on as I was trying to decide. <laughs> so let's go through the final numbers and then we will wrap it up. Uh, foundation, concealer, skin tints, four. I would say my favorite of the bunch is the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation Stick. Blushes, I have 12. My favorite would have to be either Chouchette in the cream category by Westman Atelier or Nude Venus by Pat McGrath. Four bronzers, really excited. I think my favorite is still the Butter Bronzer by Physicians Formula. Highlighter would be 10. Ooh, that one's hard to choose just one. I think the Jones Road Mil Miracle Balm all over like glass skin finish. Um, but my favorite highlight highlight right now is the Natasha Denona Super Glow Lips, 17. Right now, Lawless in Fawn is my favorite nude lipstick. And then if I had to choose a lip balm or gloss, it would be the Cary Grand Lip Whip. In rosy gold. Single eyeshadows, 21. Right now the Glossier Lid Star and Bun and Branch are actually really surprising me um, by how well they're staying. Mink by Victoria Beckham though really can't beat that. Even beats out the Chantecaille in my opinion. Next would be eyeshadow palettes. I whittled it down to eight so I kept the Victoria Beckham one. Okay my battery died. I've been doing this for hours. This takes so much time. I'm like sweating right now. Where was I? I was at eyeshadow palettes. So now I'm on face palettes. I decided to keep the Tom Ford shade in Illuminate. I really want to have more time with it. So face palettes, four. 
face powder that won Guerlain uh, Meteorites one brushes 17 mascaras i have six which is a lot more than i used to have as well uh but again no by year i just want to be safe in that department even though i talked about scarcity it's fine it'll be left to another declutter all i'm doing right now is deferring decisions most of this will have to be discarded in two years from now anyway eyeliner four i did keep the blue eyeliner uh, the brow products, I have two brow pencils, lip liners, two. I have 113 products total. A lot of makeup. Again, a lot, a lot of makeup. I am so, so lucky to have this, but I think it decluttered about 10% today, if not slightly more, because just looking at this and looking at the pile that I decluttered, this is quite a um, significant achievement, also because I decluttered a lot of eyeshadow color stories that I thought I was holding on to, made the decision to get rid of duplicates or things that do the same thing. Let me just turn you around and show you. So these are the brushes. These are the eyeliner bits and bobs. Then we have this box of makeup and this bucket of makeup. So these two make up my entire makeup collection. I am so glad you joined me here today. Thank you so much for being here and being with me for another declutter. I really, really hope you stick around. Let me know in the comments down below if you have stuck around till the end. I'm always curious about that. And yeah, find me again next week if you can. If you are on your own, no buy year, no buy makeup, or it could be anything really. I'm using the hashtag slow gaze, no buy year, and I know it's really long, uh, but that's how you can find a small community of us if we're all posting. Uh, I know several of you have said that you're also embarking on the same journey or you're already partway through your own year. So July to July, we're gonna be doing this together and I will send you all my love and support through my newsletters, which you can sign up on slowgaze.com or on Instagram, which I do post regularly on as well. Give this video a like because it really helps my little channel and I love you. My gentle humans, be safe. I will see you again soon. Adios.